Hey, it looks like you've made it to part two of my quick parts video tutorial thing. That's really good. Looks like you've got a big hunger for knowledge and you want to learn more about what quick parts are, which is fantastic. Or you've randomly just clicked onto this video and have no idea what I'm talking about. In which case, if you don't know what quick parts are and you need a quick refresh, click the card over here and I'll uh, fill you past me. We'll fill you all in. And if you're still present here with present me, then that's great. Let's just jump straight into part two. I'm not going to lie, this video is going to be filled with information. So we're going to dig down and find the fun in information, which you can do if you're bad at spelling. So let's get started. So in the last part, we basically touched on that quick parts are templates that get saved somewhere in your PC. And that word in Outlook can find those quick parts when you type a certain code word and push the F3 key. But this video here is all about the details, so let's jump in and find where that exact location is. The location of where these files are located <laughs> is in your templates folder, which is normally located in your Microsoft folder, which in turn is generally in your roaming folder. And that is then also located in your app data folder, which is located underneath your user profile in your C drive for most directories. If that all got a little bit too complex for you all straight away then an easier way of finding it is just to open your folder directory and then clicking on the address bar and typing the percentage key app data percentage. This generally brings you directly to your roaming folder and then you just navigate through the Microsoft folder and then the templates folder and then ta-da this is where your quick part files live. The files are called normal.dotm and then normal email.dotm and they relate to Word and Outlook respectively but we'll come back to more of that later on. So uh, the burning question is how do you create a quick part and then put it into one of these files? The answer to that is that you start on the relevant program that you want to use the quick part in. For this example we'll use Outlook. Just to give you an idea of how it's created we'll just make a scenario up. Let's say you want to have a stationary order form that you use internally in your office or whatever. Pretty simple and rough, but you get the idea. Once this is ready to be saved, all you need to do is highlight all of the content that you want to save as a quick part. And next, I click the insert tab on the ribbon of the email and click on this icon for quick parts. Depending on the setup of your profile, you might see some pre-saved quick parts that are defaulted to your profile settings. Like generally it's your initials and your name and then the business name of the company that you work for. And if they do exist, I can show you a real easy way to delete them as well, but we'll, we'll get onto that shortly. At the bottom of this menu, there is an option called Save Selection to Quick Parts Gallery. This will open a Create New Building Block window. This is the window that lets us select the name of the quick part. This will be our secret word that we need to type into Word or Outlook when we want to summon our quick part. The next option is the gallery where you can see the name quick parts. If you select the drop down to this, you'll see stuff like footers, headers, page numbers, auto texts. Auto text is, is similar to quick parts in a way. It's kind of like quick parts is older hot cousin but she's kind of too old and, and not really as available anymore as, as quick parts is um, so quick parts is definitely the better option um, I'm gonna leave the analogy there for now but if you do have more questions about what auto texts are um, I'm usually pretty active in the comment section so fire me off a question and I can add a little bit more content to uh, to that statement for you or don't because quick parts is way better and that's the way we do things now the reason these gallery options appear in Word is because Word has a whole bunch of other presets for headers, footers, uh, if you're creating a template of something for like a CV or a calendar or a pamphlet, any of these templates that are preset, Word has all of these in the background in this gallery for those specific purpose and that's why they're there and that's why I don't generally recommend deleting them or messing with them. We'll look at how you can look at your quick parts specifically a little bit further on down the track. Below the gallery there's an option for a category section and this defaults to general but if you feel like it or if you're going to be using these a lot you could start to create your own categories to help you manage quick parts down the track. If you're just starting off and you're not sure about categories, they can be added in later on, so don't panic. The description is for the user to give some additional insight as to what the quick part is used for. When you're browsing quick parts to decide which one you want to use in a, in a certain view, viewing the actual content is really hard. It's kind of crushed down into a tiny window. Um, so having this description is really helpful if you're going to use a huge amount of quick parts and you're going to have some kind of ambiguous name and conventions but we'll touch more on that later on. Having a good description here is just an easy way to identify the content. Lastly you have the save in section which you'll notice is populated with the normal email.dotm file that we saw at the beginning of this video. That just confirms that this is where the quick part will be saved. As a side note to this we've been using Outlook for this example but when you're using Word and you're saving a quick part uh, 
at least in Office 2016 and some previous versions, when you go to save the quick part, the save as section defaults to building block rather than normal.dotm. I don't know if this is just me in the setting of my Microsoft Office or not, but I can tell you that if you proceed to save your quick part into this gallery, it won't. Uh, the, the method I'm teaching you here won't be as effective. So when you're using Word and you're saving your quick part, you do need to manually change it from the building block option to normal.dotm, and then everything will run smooth. All right, and the last option is options, which I don't ever change. I just leave it as insert content only, uh, and it, it works fine. Um, so I wouldn't recommend playing around with that unless you want to go into bold unexplored territories. I'm not taking any responsibility for that. That's that's your game. Um, but I'm going to continue on with the video. Once you've done all of these convoluted steps, you have yourself a quick part, my good sir. Just type in the name that you chose, press F3, and boom! You can order stationery now. Bulldog clips? Why not? You deserve it. Whiteout pen? You go for it, my friend. Marker pens? Absolutely. You're quick parting now. You're... You're quick parting. You've done it. You're doing it. Good job. But before you get stuck into that big list of templates that you're so eager to move in and, and make quick parts as well, let me just bog you down with a few more ground rules so that you don't end up flying too close to the sun. First of all, try and stay away from standard words. You might have noticed this already with some of the details I've been giving you, but when you start typing a quick part, once you've typed up to four characters, it can start to recognize it in the gallery, and when you push enter, you insert that quick part into your email or your letter that you're writing. The issue is that let's say you have a quick part that's called documents and that inserts a large blurb for your customers about a document library that you might have on your website and a hyperlink to said library or whatever it is. And you've saved that and you use that on a daily basis to answer questions for customers asking where they can find your documents to download. And then in quite a separate email that you're typing to your boss, you tell them that you have the documents for your HR meeting and that you're really sorry. But when you type documents and you push enter to start a new line, it inserts the quick part content into that email. Mildly inconvenient, but if you're not careful, you might accidentally end up looking like a fool in front of somebody that you're trying to impress um, <clears throat> if you don't notice that the quick part has been inserted into your email. So rule number one is don't use any obvious words that you'd use in a normal sentence. Try and abbreviate it or make up a code like docinfo. Um, not easy to remember, but it avoids you accidentally putting it into an email and then having to go back and delete that. And then after a time, those codes that you come up with, they, be, they just become second nature anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much if it sounds convoluted. The second rule that I have for you is prefaced with a very long and industry specific anecdote, um, but it has a very relatable moral that will make you all go, ah, right at the end. So way back about a decade ago, back when I used to have hair, I used to work for a ticketing agency and we sold tickets. When you purchase a ticket for a live show, generally you're not allowed to change the date, time, etc. But if you had a good reason and you asked really nicely, sometimes the promoter of the show would allow you to change your tickets from one night to the other. When this happened, we'd send a quick part email to the customer with all the information that they'd need to know in order to exchange their tickets. It was called return policy with no space and it would generally say, Dear so and so, here are our terms and conditions. In this case we can accommodate a change, what you need to do is get your new tickets. We need to receive your old tickets within two weeks of the showtime and we'll refund them once we can see the new tickets have been purchased. It was fairly standard and fairly simple, but can you see the issue already? If we sent this email on the week of the show, then customers would have a two week window to buy the new tickets and to send the old tickets back for a refund. But if the show had been and gone in that time and we'd paid all the money up to the promoter for said show, we as a ticketing agent would have to refund that customer out of our own pocket. So we wanted to make sure that when the time frame before the show was shortening, that we were giving them the right information to get the tickets back and to buy the new ones and to get a refund all before that settlement date. Therefore, we set up a new quick part for when the show was less than two weeks away and it said something like, Dear so and so, here are our terms and conditions. In this case, we can accommodate a change, but you need to bring your tickets into our box office immediately and confirm that seats are available for your desired show and then we will accommodate your change. And we called this quick part Return Policy Urgent. So in theory, we would send a customer an email if their show was more than two weeks away and say, return policy, tell them they have two weeks, post their tickets back to us, buy new tickets, when we can see the new purchase, we'd refund the old purchase, Bob's your uncle. Uh, and then if their show was happening tomorrow night, but they had a sudden emergency, maybe they had a flight cancelled and they couldn't get there and we could accommodate a change, we'd tell them to go to a box office to buy the new tickets, refund the old tickets then and there, uh, and to basically hurry along, Bob's your auntie. No, that's not how that one goes. That was it? our expectation, but after a week, we started to notice customers who fell into the two weeks or greater category 
firing us back reply emails complaining about our return policy. These would be people who were out of town and they were traveling to the city to see a show and they were asking why they were being directed to go to a box office which was you know 20, 30, 40 kilometers out of their way to do an exchange when the show wasn't happening until next year. So this was confusing because this isn't what we thought would happen. What we discovered was when we were typing our magic word, in this case return policy, and then pushing F3, Outlook was going through the gallery of quick parts and it was picking the first alphabetical option, which for some reason was return policy urgent. And that's because the longer word with urgent at the end came before the word without urgent at the end. And also because of the way that we'd named them, return policy was never ever being picked because it was always on the second run. So we had to make a small change to our quick part naming convention. We had urgent return policy and return policy, which really makes a lot more sense because you're making the unique characters first in the naming convention, and that way it can pick it up a lot faster. You actually only have to type urge and push F3 and the urgent one will come up. So we made the small change. People who had more than two weeks to book new tickets got the right expectations. Uh, people who had less than two weeks didn't miss out on good seats and actually got their refund without us having to refund out of their pocket. And then everyone lived happily ever after. Except for the people who we declined exchanges for, but I mean that wasn't really our call to make. So the moral of the story, which is rule number two, is to introduce unique characters as early as possible in that code and make sure that they're different from any other ones that you've picked. Otherwise you're gonna get a clash and the wrong quick part content might appear in your email or your letter and then you have to do a whole bunch of research just to find out why that is. So that's how you create a quick part and how you make them work really well. But what happens if you found out that they're not working really well and you want to make some changes? Um, the answer to that is, well, it depends what kind of change you want to make. If you want to change the name that you type to activate the quick part, the quick part category, the description, or even the gallery, or the save-in section, like if you accidentally forgot to change it from building blocks to normal in Word, as mentioned before, then there is an easy way to do that. To do this, you select quick parts from the relevant program, and now that you have some quick parts, you'll see a small selection of your quick parts appear in the drop down box. At this point, you can right click on the drop down list and select Organize and Delete. This will open up the building block Organizer window, which contains all of your quick parts. If you want to find your quick part really quickly, you can actually use filters on the building block Organizer to find said quick part. In Word, you could click on Template and then scroll down to where the normal.dotm files are, and all your quick parts are right there and amongst all the other building blocks. Or if you have a lot of quick parts, you can actually click on the Category option and filter them that way uh, and then scroll down and find the relevant category which you should be using if you have a lot of quick parts. Right so back to this window you can see here all of the content of your quick part in this itty bitty living space. The name and description of the quick part from before is here and on the bottom left we have the option of inserting the quick part into the document or email that you have open, deleting the quick part from your gallery and then also editing the property of the quick part which opens a modify building block window which is very similar to the one that we saw before when we were loading the quick part. Here you're free to alter any of these sections and it will update your quick part as well. So if you have a situation where the name is too similar to another one, like in my ticketing story, you can change it here with not too much fuss. When you click OK, a pop-up will appear asking if you want to redefine the building block entry, confirming the change. If you want to change the actual content that's in the quick part, then it's a little bit more tricky. You need to start by either inserting the existing quick part that you have into Word or Outlook, or just by typing out what you want it to be changed to. Tweak or change what you want and then highlight the selection that you want to be in your quick part. Select the quick part menu from your insert tab and then click save selection to quick part selection um, as you did before. Now you need to enter the name, gallery, category and save in all exactly the same as the old version of the quick part. You can alter the description if you want, it doesn't care about that, but if these other values don't match the existing one that you already have, then it's not going to overwrite it, it's going to create a new quick part and then things are going to get really confusing. Because yes, if the category is different to the old one, you can actually have two quick parts with the same name, but different categories. And then what you get from there is it's going to pick the first category alphabetically and insert that quick part when you type this code. Confusing, I know. Uh, doing an audit on your quick parts every now and again to make sure you don't have duplicates is, is recommended, but not 100% necessary. If you've done this correctly, this, this pop-up will appear and you just click OK and it redefines your building block entry and you're good to go. So in the example I spoke about before where you might have accidentally selected the wrong category and you didn't get that building block rede redefinition pop box popping up, you can then go back up into your quick parts, go to organize and delete, 
and scroll down and find the two quick parts that have the matching names. The one that you want to be the quick part that you keep, open that up, change the category, and if done right, you'll be asked to confirm the redefining of the building block organizer, uh, and then the two variants will combine into one with the updated content in the back end of the gallery. Or you can just manually delete one if you're not confident which one's the right one, check the one that's left over and, and make the change as required. It all gets confusing and annoying, but the benefits are, are really worth it if you really nail it the first time. Lastly, we need to actually save these quick parts, because everything we've created at the moment, it's it's kind of saved virtually in Word or Outlook, but it hasn't saved onto your PC yet. Well, how do we do that? Because we've been saving them this whole time, right? Every time we click save, how do we actually save it onto our PC? The beauty of that is that it happens automatically when you close Word or Outlook. You can't save them by saving the document you have open. That is, that saves the document itself, but that's irrelevant to the gallery that we've been building in the background. There is no link to that gallery that we've been building and the actual one-off document that you have open where you save them all. The changes that you've made were temporarily hosted in the background while Word or Outlook are open, but when you close Outlook in Word, the changes will be applied to the normal.dotm or normal email.dotm file that you have selected in the save in section of the building block window. To look at it a different way, if you open up a file explorer and type in percentage app data percentage into the address bar and then click enter, you can navigate through the Microsoft subfolder and then the template subfolder, and this is where those folders are located in your PC. If you change the view of this folder to details, then you'll be able to see the date when the folder was last updated. Generally, this will align with the date that you had a Windows update or something like that. But once you close Outlook or Word, you'll see this modification date change to the current date and time. This is the smoking gun to let you know that everything's saved okay. Every time you open up Word, it then calls out to this folder to check all of the building blocks and all of the quick parts that it has available in its background gallery. And likewise, Outlook talks to the normal email.dotm file, and every time you type the name of a quick part and click F3, it pulls the content that you've saved here and inserts it into your blank email or document. See, I told you there was a lot of information in this video, but we actually are at the end of it. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions and the process of creating quick parts is nice and clear for you in general. Um, there are obviously some tricks and tips to learn, and I think those are best discovered by yourself. But if you do get really stuck and you have some burning questions that are just not answered in this video, um, jump down to the comment section. I'm pretty active in there. As I said before, I'll try and answer any questions that you have. Um, or your question might have already been answered, and you can just go and look and you don't even have to ask, which would be great. Coming up next for me is this delicious licorice all sort, which I'll take a break and reward myself with. You don't have to watch me eat this. You can jump straight into part three, which is coming up at the end of this video and in that video we'll explore the process of exporting all of the hard work that we've done in today's video and giving that to somebody else who hasn't done any work at all um, so if that's something that appeals to you if you want to know how to make these changes common for everybody in your team or your business um, video 3 will answer that if you did jump into this video for some weird reason without any context part 1 is also available to view as well so you can go back and, and backtrack and, uh, and, and start from the beginning like a normal person that only sociopaths eat their licorice all sorts of way. I eat mine by um, separating out all the layers. I don't know if that's true or not, but boy do I enjoy it. <laughs>